Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the caregivers uh, support group meeting. I'm Andrew, and I'm joined by my co-facilitator, Colleen, uh, for tonight's meeting. And we are the co-facilitators of the caregiver support group. We meet on the first Tuesday of every month. We discuss the rewards and the challenges of being a caregiver for uh, companions, loved ones, parents. Uh, it's a safe space and a confidential space for care caregivers to find emotional support. Tonight, we have a very special program on tap, maintaining healthy nutrition during a cancer diagnosis. Before the program begins, uh, I would like to ask that all participants mute themselves during the presentation. When our presenter finishes her presentation, we will begin the Q&A discussion. You are welcome to submit questions uh, during the presentation through the chat function uh, located at the bottom of your screen. Uh, the program will end at seven, so we ask that caregivers remain on the call until 7.30. And I'd also like to extend the invitation to anyone who would like to join our meeting after the conclusion of tonight's presentation. The presentation is being recorded, and it will be available on the SHARE website very soon. Now I'd like to introduce our presenter for this, e this evening, Veronica Ronnie Fortunata. She is a registered dietitian, nutritionist with more than 20 years of experience in various areas of nutrition. She began her career at Montefiore Hospital as an inpatient and outpatient clinical dietitian, then switched her focus to uh, women's intervention nutrition studies. Then as the administrator of the Clinical Nutrition Research Unit at Strang Cancer Prevention Center and Weill Cornell Medical College. She ultimately took her career in a more community focused uh, direction as a nutritionist in adult medical day treatment and HIV day treatment at God's Love We Deliver. Ronnie provides nutrition counseling to clients with uh, cancer, HIV, cardiac disease, and numerous other life-altering medical conditions. She is also involved in outreach to the medical community and promotes, uh, provides rather presentations to community members in various settings. Recently, Ronnie was appointed to the New York City HIV Planning Council as a volunteer, where she helps ensure that people living with HIV have access to and maintain appropriate quality services across the continuum of care, resulting in the best possible health and quality of life. Ronnie received her uh, MS in Nutrition and Education from Teachers College Columbia University, where she also completed her dietetic internship. It is my great pleasure to introduce Ronnie Fortunato. Well, hello, everybody. I'm happy to be here this evening. Um, and I'm especially happy to be um, talking about this topic with all of you. Um, I was I, I said earlier to the facilitators that um, I have been doing some, a lot of research actually in this area. So it's one that um, is very, I, I, I don't wanna say it's near to my heart, but it is very, um, you know, it's very impactful, I think to many, if not everybody. Um, and so it certainly has impacted my life and my families. And so I am happy to be here speaking with you. Um, I, I will just say that um, I, you know, I, I have seen some of your questions and I'm, I'm happy to answer them. I see that a lot of the questions were food-based and um, I'm gonna be talking a lot in my presentation about um, symptoms, managing symptoms, et cetera. 
um, but but we will get to the foods as well. So um, so I, I hope you find this information very helpful. And um, and again, we will get to all of your questions and talk about foods. So I'm going to start sharing my screen again. And um, let's see, how is that? Right, can you see the the presentation? Mm -hmm. Everyone? Yes. Okay, great. So um, well, again, so we're going to be talking about maintaining healthy nutrition during a cancer um, diagnosis. And I just want to tell you first where where I am currently working right this moment, which is, um, and I've been here for 10 years, uh, is God's Love We Deliver. So I don't know if any of you are familiar with God's Love We Deliver, but we are based in New York City in Soho, and we prepare and deliver nutritious meals for people in the greater New York City area living with severe illness. And um, um, of course, cancer is one of those, um, is one of the diagnoses that we, um, that we provide meals for. So all the, these meals are um, provided free of charge and as we like to say, full of love. Now, um, we, so we serve people who are too sick to shop and cook for themselves. Um, so just in terms of the eligibility, we, um, we serve people with a diagnosis that requires a new a nutrition intervention, such as um, HIV, cancer, chronic kidney disease, et cetera. Um, referrals come from many sources, including healthcare providers, care managers, discharge planners, but also individuals may refer themselves uh, to our program. And I would say um, if anybody on the call is interested in the program, please, um, you, you can let me know or, or visit our website um, and, and it, you'll see, I, I think it will be easy for you to get on board. So, um, and one other thing I'd like to tell you about us is that we serve the family. So, so we understand that um, an individual may be dealing with an illness and they, have, um, they, they might have children, young children to deal with or also, um, senior caregivers, and we provide meals for them too. Um, but moving right along, today we're going to talk about um, the side effects of cancer treatment, and I'm sure everybody is is aware of what they are. Um, but then we're going to talk about tips to manage these, and then again, I, I will um, I, I will talk about um, many of the foods that you have asked about. So um, first, I'll talk a little bit about the side effects, and I am going to. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't want to say I'm going to rush, but I am going to go through these quickly because um, probably you or your loved ones are the ones who are dealing with these. So we'll start with chemotherapy, and which can be associated with many side effects, um, but including mostly including um, loss of appetite, weight loss, nausea and vomiting, flu-like symptoms, diarrhea and constipation, um, mouth sores and dry mouth, among other things that you see here. And then um, there are also types of biotherapy, which is, um, you know, these are medications. They can, I would say they're similar to um, chemotherapy, but they act in a different manner. And um, again, you see on here, nausea and vomiting, diarrhea or constipation, abdominal pain, you see decreased appetite. Also here you see some um, fever and chills, headache and flushing. Um, and then some less, um, some less common side effects with bleeding from the nose or, or there could be um, blood in the urine, GI tract, et cetera. Um, and then there's hormone therapy, which many people who are dealing with um, with breast cancer are are taking. So, um, and so these can be um, again, you see nausea and vomiting. You also see, um, but you also see hot flashes and sweating, fever, headache, um, skin changes, joint ache or um, bone pain, muscle weakness, weight gain. Um, menstrual irregularities also um, increased, I, I'm sorry, decreased libido. Um, and then radiation therapy comes along with uh, side effects as well. So side effects of, of radiation therapy can be acute, but, the, but they can also be late side effects. So I'm gonna talk about those two, but radiation and also depending on where and which part of the body is radiated, 
Um, th you, there can be diarrhea. Again, you see diarrhea, nausea and vomiting, um, fatigue, headache, blurry vision, earaches, hair loss along, you know, not just chemotherapy, but also radiation can lead to, um, to hair loss. We also see um, sexuality and fertility changes, um, urinary frequency and incontinence. And then some of the late side effects um, include headache, changes in memory and attention, osteopenia, pericarditis. Um, you also see diarrhea here, alterations in taste and smell, infertility, skin pigmentation changes, fibrosis and atrophy, and also cataracts. And um, I, I just want to point out, you know, you see diarrhea in so many um, in, in so many of the treatment modalities. Because oftentimes we are, um, well, oftentimes the GI tract is being affected, like e either through surgery or um, it can be affected by chemotherapy. And um, again, of course, radiation to the GI tract is going to, is, is going to greatly affect the GI tract and the ability to absorb. So, um, and then <clears throat> surgery um, and, a lot of this is just the result of the surgery itself, um, but you can see pain and cramping, abnormal transit of food, and again, that's that's with the surgery to the GI tract. You can see um, longer short-term maldigestion, malabsorption, and heartburn, bowel obstruction, which is very serious. Other nutritional deficiencies, again, if the GI tract is not working the way it should be working, you would see that then you also have, as always, nausea and vomiting, diarrhea and constipation, and also, um, also dysphagia, depending again on, on what, where the surgery has taken place. So <clears throat> we're going to, I'm gonna be going through tips now, and I'll just be covering different, um, I, I'll, I'll just be covering the individual um, symptoms versus, repeating the symptoms for um, each modality of treatment. So um, a, big, a big symptom though is loss of appetite. And so here are, um, so here are some things that you want to do to really, to manage that. And you wanna manage your loss of appetite. <clears throat> you know, certainly people enjoy eating and they want to eat, but I think the big thing with loss of appetite is, is really to avoid, um, weight loss. So so weight and certainly muscle loss is something that you really want to avoid. So um, for one thing, and you're going to see this very often um, in, in most of these, um, it, just in most of these, um, and, and, and all the symptoms, signs and symptoms, but we're going to say to eat small frequent meals of calorie dense foods and drinks. So small frequent meals, I think is self-explanatory. Calorie dense food means that you, you do wanna eat foods that have a lot of calories because when you're able to eat, you wanna make the most of it. So for example, even though eating fruits and vegetables is very helpful in, um, in, terms of, in, in terms of keeping a healthy diet, good nutritional status, et cetera. You also, you know, in this case, you wanna get your, um, you wanna really get your money's worth. So, so you wanna eat um, foods that are high in calories. You also wanna eat in pleasant surroundings. And another thing that's important to do here is to eat by the clock rather than waiting for your appetite or hunger cues because they just might not, um, they, they might not come to you. They, they really might not. And, you know, especially when you're dealing with loss of appetite or nausea and vomiting, things that are really just making you feel lousy, um, you're not necessarily going to want to eat. So eating by the clock can be very important. Um, then you want to you want to preserve your energy by using foods that are easy to prepare and also to serve. I know we have both um, both patients and caregivers on the call. We want to consume liquids between meals rather than during meals. And that's because sometimes um, you can fill up on fluids just as much as you can fill up on food. So, but you want to, um, but, but that leads to the next thing is really just maximizing intake when you're most hungry. And so um, by, by 
taking in the fluids between meals rather than with meals, you are able to maximize. And then also engaging in light physical activity can help stimulate the appetite and um, it can help move things in the GI tract. So um, again, depending on where surgery or chemotherapy radiation took place, that, that can be very important. And so, so I have here some high calorie, um, high calorie and high protein snack ideas. So, um, I, I mean, we can go through a few of these and I will, but I'm also going to be giving these um, slides to Steph. Stephanie, I believe, is going to take them. And, and if anybody wants them, you can um, get in touch with her. Also, my contact information will be at the end of this as well. But so here we have some, um, again, high calorie and high protein snack ideas. So, so we have peanut butter and banana on toast. So peanut butter is something that um, a lot of people like and, um, and it's easy. You just open the jar and, and, and it's right there, but it's also healthy. It's got protein and it's got healthy fat. Um, and then the tuna salad on crackers, high in protein. Um, <clears throat> You have trail mix. So these are all, you know, we're encouraging you to include, again, some high protein and high calorie items like almonds, peanuts, et cetera. Even raisins are higher in calorie than you would think um, for a fruit. Then yogurt smoothie. Um, so you're, you're using your yogurt, you're, um, you're supplement, supplementing it, I'm sorry, with um, half and half. And then you're adding in for flavor. Um, some some frozen strawberries. And then there's egg and cheese. Um, again, high calorie. Um, so so these are some um, some snacks. Now we're going to be talking about tips for managing nausea and vomiting. And um, so so some causes of these are um, again, some cancer therapies, also intense pain, fatigue, and stress can cause nausea and vomiting. So um, <clears throat> So I think the most important thing to remember with nausea and vomiting is that you are losing fluid. Um, so you want to make sure that you don't become dehydrated. So if you've been vomiting, you wanna start by um, drinking just a very small amount of um, clear liquids. So you're gonna start with, um, again, clear liquids. And um, so those include, it can include water, sports drinks, clear broth, um, also teas are well tolerated. And then once you um, can drink the clear liquids without vomiting, then you can try um, full liquid foods like smoothies, soups, pureed soups are very good. Um, and you know, and any soups that are easy on your stomach. So I find that a lot of people like split pea soup. So, um, so that I think is something that can be easy on your stomach. It's on the mild side, rather bland, and um, and it's it can be really enjoyable, and that's very important. Then again, we have the small, frequent meals and snacks. So um, you know, we say here eat six to eight small meals or snacks instead of three large meals. I think the large meals can really be daunting, actually, just to sit down. If you're not feeling well, and you sit down and you see a huge plate of food. It can be um, it, it can be troublesome, I think, and and so if you just you know if, if you make them smaller plates, it can just seem to be more manageable. Um, and then you want to also eat bland foods and foods that are um, that are served cold or at room temperature. I, I should say cool or at room temperature. Um, I've been told by some oncology nurses that very hot. Or very, um, or very cold foods can cause the, the stomach to go into spasms and certainly that's not going to help. So, um, and then also, you know, very sweet, fatty or spicy foods are, are not going to be helpful either. Um, hard candy can relieve nausea and also remove bad taste in the mouth. And then um, you can also um, use this solution of rinsing of, <laughs> the solution to rinse and also remove a, a bad taste from your mouth. And then um, other recommendations, again, to stay hydrated, sip water throughout the day, 
Um, and, and as I said, if you're vomiting, dehydration is a serious concern. And even though it might be difficult, you want to drink um, clear liquids as often as you possibly can during this time. I personally find that um, ginger ale can be very helpful, although um, although some say to let the to let some of the bubbles go out of the ginger ale first, um, and then after vomiting, you you definitely want to rinse your mouth and spit out the water, um, and then try not to drink for another thirty minutes. Um, but after that, try to consume some, again, you see clear liquids here. So we see apple juice, cranberry juice, um, flat soda. Um, again, there goes the ginger ale, some broth or even, um, um, even ice chips. So either water or you can even make, um, if you find it to be helpful, you can make flavored ice chips in various ways. You can freeze tea if you like the taste of tea. You can freeze some apple juice or cranberry juice, etc. And um, <clears throat> again, your environment can be very important. So you want to have a peaceful eating place. Um, the room should be well ventilated and you want to eliminate or just do away with strong food or cooking odors. And then also just um, you want to avoid wearing perfume after shave, et cetera. So again, small, um, strong odors are really not helpful and you want to do away with them. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. So here's another recipe that we have. And um, so this is a recipe, I, I'm, I'm not going to get, um, I'm, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but it's for lemon ginger cornmeal cookies. So <clears throat> I want to say that the ginger can be very helpful. Also lemon can be somewhat refreshing and the cornmeal is on the bland side. So, so you, you, you're not gonna worry. For example, this is not a chocolate chip cookie that you're, that you're trying to have, which can upset your stomach, but, but this is something that's mild and, um, and it includes some items like the ginger that really do help digestion and lemon too, which can be refreshing. So um, <clears throat> again, these slides will be, um, will be available to you if, if you want to just take a look at this recipe. Then um, tips for managing fatigue. So we know that um, fatigue lingers. It's not just, <clears throat> you know, it's not just waking up tired in the morning, but it's really lingering and it has different causes. So <clears throat> um, you really want to use what they refer to as um, good sleep hygiene, but really, um, you know, trying going to sleep at the same time every evening and waking up at the same time in the morning, setting an alarm can be very helpful. You also want to cut out caffeine. Um, drink a lot of water to stay hydrated. Exercise um, throughout the day as much as you can, even if that's only small. To avoid becoming overweight or underweight. Um, and take time to relax and, um, and, and perhaps try medication or yoga and also limit alcohol use if you feel very tired. And <clears throat> I'm gonna say that limiting alcohol use is, um, is recommended for, um, <clears throat> you know, for various reasons and, and various types of cancer, um, but certainly um, it, it's going to help you deal with fatigue. The recipe is here and you can um, you can change, you know, you can add different ingredients. Um, but but again, this is um, anti-inflammatory. I see the chia seeds. There is peanut butter powder um, that you can add there. You can add in protein powder, which is <clears throat> not necessarily um, tasty, but you do really want to avoid losing weight and muscle mass. Um, but then you have you know we have some things in here to um, to enhance the flavor. Now we have um, I'm going to talk about some tips for managing diarrhea and um, so diarrhea diarrhea is really defined as an increase um, of bowel movements from baseline. That's really what it is. So it varies for, um, for different individuals. 
um, but um, the but diarrhea can really be um, harmful, and also cancer treatments can cause diarrhea, but that can really be harmful because they it, it will affect the um, the cells that line your intestines. Um, something else to note is that diarrhea can also be caused by infections. So um, if you are having diarrhea, you want to mention it to your medical professional. Diarrhea, be sure to mention it to um, the medical professional because you really want to rule out an infection in this case. <clears throat> so um, again, you want to take um, dehydration seriously. You want to drink plenty of fluids to replace the fluid you lose. And the fluids can include um, water, ginger ale, coconut water, sports drinks. Um, <clears throat> you know, in terms of the sports drinks like Gatorade, I, I find them to be high in sugar and um, sodium and maybe not much else. So I think water or coconut water um, will be very good. And then, um, so you want to let your bowels rest. So you want to start out with drinking only clear liquids. Um, and then you also, again, want to let the carbonated beverages lose their fizz before you drink them. You want to eat here. We, again, we have the small frequent meals. Um, you want to eat foods and liquids that are high in potassium. Um, and <clears throat> also um, the other electrolytes. But um, I, I would say definitely you want to try to replace the potassium. So, um, and also liquids that are high in sodium and other electrolyte. Um, so foods that are high in potassium are um, bananas, um, potatoes, <clears throat> tomatoes, and um, oranges are, are the top four. Um, so keep those in mind. And then you want to eat... Um, you know, you want to eat low fiber foods, but um, so eating foods that are high in um, insoluble fiber can be, um, can make diarrhea worse. But on the other hand, soluble fiber like oatmeal can be helpful because it can really add bulk to the stool. And, um, and, and that's something that you want to do. So you want to, um, you know, then you're not losing so much fluid. And um, finally, you want to have a food and drinks at room temperature, neither too hot nor too cold. Um, and then um, things to avoid. So you want to avoid, um, again, you want to avoid the high fiber foods. Um, you want to avoid sugary drinks, very hot or cold drinks. You want to avoid um, greasy or fatty foods, um, drinks and food that can cause gas milk products because um, lactose in milk can cause a problem. Alcohol can be, um, alcohol can just be very irritating. Spicy foods can, um, can increase diarrhea. Um, foods with caffeine, also um, sugar-free products so you, that are sweetened with um, sugar alcohols, so like sorbitol. And then um, apple juice since it's naturally high in sorbitol. So these are some of the things that you do want to avoid if you have diarrhea. And then, um, so here are some additional um, recommendations. And again, you want to let your doctor or nurse know if, um, if you start bleeding, if you've had diarrhea for more than 24 hours ongoing, um, you know, you might have an infection, so you might need medication to um, help control the problems. And you also, if, if diarrhea is very severe and you're not able to eat, then you may need IV fluids. I just can't emphasize enough how important it is to, um, to hydrate or rehydrate. And, um, and I would also say, don't take medication for diarrhea without asking your doctor or nurse, because sometimes it's just good to allow whatever is in your system to make its way out. If you take a medication to stop it, then, um, you're, then you're not allowing that. So um, that's something important to think about too. And then so here's um, a quick recipe for um, electrolyte replacing popsicles. So, um, and then also um, a recipe for making your own Pedialyte. 
Now we have um, some tips and I am keeping an eye on the time so we can take questions, but um, tips for uh, managing mouth sores and dry mouth. And mainly you wanna choose foods that are um, soft and easy to chew and swallow. Um, so here, here are some items that can be very helpful. Um, and it makes sense if you think about it. So you wanna have milkshakes, custard puddings, cottage cheese, yogurt, and smoothies. Um, so again, they're um, easy to, they, they go down easily. You don't even really have to chew them, but they do go down easily. Then you have um, mashed potatoes, mashed peas and carrots or other mashed vegetables, tender fish or chicken. Um, so, so, you know, some, so then, you know, you have some fruits and vegetables, et cetera, et cetera. Now, peach or pear or apricot nectars, because if you do have mouth sores, something like orange juice is not going to, um, it's, it's not going to be helpful because it's so acidic. So those items tend to be non-acidic and they can be very soothing. Um, and then cooked cereal like um, oatmeal, grits, cream of wheat, I would just warn you to make sure it cools off a little, creamy soups and stews, um, scrambled eggs or omelets, canned fruit, um, and also nutritional supplements such as um, some of them are Boost and Live, Resource, New Basic, and of course, um, Ensure is one of them as well. And um, then you things that you want to avoid, and I mentioned some of this already, but you want to avoid the citrus fruits and juices, tomato products, um, dry food without sauce, spicy or salty foods, rough or raw foods such as apples or granola, um, sticky or chewy foods like peanut butter or raisins, and then commercial mouthwashes with alcohol. All for reasons that I mentioned, you really just don't want to irritate the mouth. And um, some other additional recommendations, you can add, um, add extra sauce or gravy, even melted butter or sour cream. You can puree or blenderize your food, cut your food into small pieces, making it just a lot easier to chew. And you can try sucking on ice. Um, again, hot food can irritate the mouth, so room temperature is best. Um, and then you can also ask your doctor or dentist about using um, anesthetic lozenges or spray to help relieve pain while you are eating. And then here's some soothing, um, soothing shake recipes. So again, these are just, they're, these are not acidic and um, just allowing you to get additional fluid. It's also something just, again, as it's called soothing into your, um, just soothing into your mouth and into your belly. And now I wanna talk about um, a few tips for, present, for preventing weight loss. Um, and again, that's really one of the most important things for you to think about because as you are fighting or your loved ones are fighting this disease, um, it's so important to keep the weight on and not to go into the, um, you really don't wanna go into the um, spiral of, of weight loss. And there's another thing to keep in mind too, that you wanna maintain your, um, your, basically your lean body mass or your muscle, that's what you wanna maintain. You don't wanna go into a situation where, um, so there's something called sarcopenia if any of you have heard of it, but sarcopenia is, um, is where, you know, we can either lose weight or gain weight, but we're losing muscle mass and we're replacing it with fat. And that's just not, <clears throat> excuse me, it's, it's not going to help you um, maintain quality of life or really um, full functioning. So again, it's very important to keep, um, to keep your muscle mass. So um, again, here we see eating uh, five or six small meals a day instead of the large ones. So um, almost for everything, you can try eating a small frequent meals. Um, again, here's something we talked about before, eating by the clock. So you can eat something every two or three hours. You can eat larger meals when you feel well and are rested. And then you wanna eat food that's high in protein and calories. Um, this includes meat. Um, and in that meat, I would say um, stick with um, chicken or chicken or fish. Um, and then eggs are also, um, you know, eggs are 
are high in cholesterol, but they are a very, very, very good source of protein. So, so just keep that in mind. And then you can also add protein to your, um, to your foods um, by adding um, gravies, even um, well, butter and oil for the, uh, for the calories mostly, and then nuts, granola, and dried fruit, if you're able to. Um, so if you're able to chew and swallow properly, and then um, you want to cook with protein fortified milk, keep, <clears throat> keep snacks nearby for when you feel well, eat a bedtime snack. Um, and then if you need to alter the consistency of the food, do so. Um, <clears throat> and then just eat foods that are um, soft or cool. Um, and then we say frozen, but again, you want to let that melt a little so that it's not going to, it's not going to be frozen. It's not going to be too cold for you and then cause um, stomach spasms. And then um, you do want to drink liquids throughout the day, even when you don't want to eat. Um, sip small amounts of liquids during meals. And then also remember to eat, um, eat and drink separately. And then if you've lost a significant amount of weight unintentionally, you can drink one or two liquid supplements a day and they should be consumed as snacks. They're not meal replacements, but they are snacks. And um, uh, be as active as you can because being active can really stimulate your appetite. And then, um, so I have listed here some meal additions. Um, so we, you know, you have cheese, dry milk powder, peanut butter, um, nuts, banana, and other pureed fruits, whole milk, sauces, hard cooked eggs, and avocado. And then also, <clears throat> excuse me, granola, wheat germ, or flax. And you can sprinkle that on various items, including yogurt, pudding, and ice cream, but you can also sprinkle it on um, hot or cold cereal. And now, um, and I, I know I rushed through that, but I, <clears throat> I would like to take questions at this time. So <clears throat> I'm sorry, Stephanie is going to manage the questions and um, we'll be talking about some foods now. Thank you so much, Ronnie. That was an incredible presentation and we really appreciate you talking about such an important conversation and also providing all those recipes that was uh, really great. So everyone that's on the call, we'd appreciate it if uh, you submit any questions that you have in the chat feature, um, and I'll make sure to ask them all to Ronnie. Um, so there are also some questions submitted beforehand that I'll go over as well. But one quick question that's already been submitted um, was, in the case of diarrhea, will soluble and non-soluble fiber be avoided? No, I think that's... Um... <clears throat> soluble fiber. So something, for example, like oatmeal can be very helpful with diarrhea. I think I mentioned earlier that it will, um, that it can add bulk to the stool. So <clears throat> you're not losing. So in other words, the water is being resorbed into the body. It's not just leaving your body. Um, I, I would recommend um, avoiding non-soluble fiber. Great, thank you. Sure. And so what are the best foods to build immunity and help kind of fight cancer? Okay, so, so you know, this is a topic that I've spoken about before, um, maybe to this group uh, and, and maybe um, to other groups, but the best thing to do to, to build immunity and fight cancer is really just to start with a healthy base and <laughs> that healthy base being whole foods rather than um rather than processed or or supplements that's i, I think that's something very important to remember then uh, plenty of fruits and vegetables and i realize that with um with surgery to the intestines or you know to any any part of the gi tract can make that difficult but as much as you are able to, I just recommend eating at least two servings of fruits and vegetables every day. And then you want to also eat your protein. So you want to <clears throat> you want to focus more on um, like lean chicken. So for example, um, chicken breast, but also fish is good. 
And um, I would say like, there is one thing to worry about with fish. It, it's high in protein, it can be low fat. And if it's high in fat, it's omega-3 fat, which is very, um, it's a very important fat to consume and it's a healthful fat. Um, I would, the only thing I warn about too much chicken is, um, is excess mercury. So um, I would say you want to limit fish to maybe, to, I, I'm just gonna say three times a week. But I'm, I'm sorry. And then, you know, I kind of lost myself there. But so the, the important thing to do is start with a healthy base and then add to it. And you want to add to it with um, so many anti-inflammatory foods. So um, and, and fruits and vegetables really are those anti-inflammatory foods. They have um, they just have so many properties about them, some that we don't even know. Um, so we know about, you know, we know phytochemicals exist but we don't necessarily know what they all are, but, but we know about some of them. So there are the phenols, the um, flavonoids, the, um, oh, the allicin foods. So those being garlic and onion. Um, and, um, and so you get a lot of those from the plant pigments. So it's very important to, um, to include those. And then, <clears throat> you know, many spices are anti-inflammatory and um, anti anti-inflammatory and pro-immune system. Um, and so the many spices and also colorful spices. And what I'm gonna mention is um, turmeric um, and that contains curcumin. And um, that's a spice that is very, um, it's, it's, it's got so many wonderful properties, anti-inflammatory properties um, that here at God's Love, we do include that in um, in many of our recipes here because it is um, because it is very helpful. Thank you. So I actually had a few questions come in regarding keto diets. So there's so many conversations surrounding keto diet, and a few people ask, "Is that something people dealing with cancer should consider doing?" Or so, what are your thoughts around that? So I'm not a fan of the keto diet, but I, but I will say this, I mean, what, so there hasn't been any research, any, um, any sound research surrounding the keto diet. However, um, from what I can say about the keto diet, um, it, it sort of excludes, it excludes a lot of um, starchy food, which is not necessarily a good thing. However, um, you know, when, when I was talking about building a healthy base and I talked about including lean protein and I also talked about eating a lot of fruits and vegetables. Um, so, so if you look at it that way, then you are <clears throat> consuming sort of a keto diet. Um, so, you're con so you're leaving out a lot of starches and I know that's something the keto diet does, um, but it's, it's not good to, um, to eliminate starches or to avoid starches. But what you want to do is avoid many processed starches. So for example, you want to include fiber in your diet. So I would say I can, instead of having white rice, why not have quinoa? Um, because that's, that's healthy. It's got, a, it's got antioxidants. It has um, great soluble and insoluble fiber. So, it, you know, it can really keep things moving in the GI tract and these things are all important. Um, so I'm not sure <clears throat> exactly what the keto diet does, says, I know there are certain, there are certain meats that are allowed, certain meats that aren't allowed. And I think that there are a lot of fats that are allowed that really as, um, as cancer survivors, people should probably stay away from. For example, saturated fat and trans fats are, um, are foods to be avoided for, for many, if not all cancer survivors and actually all of us. I mean, there's really no, um, we're, we're told to avoid trans fats. They don't occur in nature, trans fats. They just, they occur as a result of processing. Yeah, that makes sense. So what suggestions do you have for loss of taste? Um, loss of taste? Yeah. So <clears throat> I would say, I, 
you know, <clears throat> loss of taste comes in varying degrees. So I would just say to try to um, try to add some flavorings that may, um, you know, that may add some flavor to the food or may add some taste to it. It could be something like adding vinegar, a marinade or something. It, it could be like adding spices, but not hot spices, but just a lot of um, herbs and spices to the food to give it some flavor. And um, in, in terms of varying degrees, if all else fails and, you know, nothing is helping. Um, another thing I'm going to throw in there is some citrus. You know, you can sprinkle some citrus on your foods, all of it, you, you know, vegetables, meat, everything. Um, but if all else fails, something that I think can be really important is just eating by the clock um, because it is really important to keep your weight up. Yeah, thank you. You have talked about the value of fish, but kind of the worry of mercury sometimes. So someone had asked, what types of fish to select and avoid to reduce mercury intake? Well, um, I mean, I, I guess I'd rather just talk about which fish are better because I think that we, I, I really do think that we have to be concerned with mercury in, um, in many types of fish. But some of the fish that um, that have really healthy fat, they have healthy fat. So a lot of fish have the omega-3 fatty acids. One of the big ones is salmon. Um, and because it's really full of omega-3 fats. So I would say that's a big one, but salmon is not without the risk of mercury. So, um, I, I would say the bit, the thing to do for mercury to avoid mercury toxicity is, is just really to limit the amount of fish you have. For example, having fish every day, I think is not really a good thing to do, um, you know, as much as we might want to. Um, so I, I would just say maybe have fish three or no more than four times a week to avoid the mercury. Thank you. So for estrogen sensitive breast cancer survivors, what food should be avoided? Um, okay, so it's actually the same foods that I've mentioned, but um, and, and, and I want to talk about um, I want to talk about phytoestrogens, but um, so I'm going to say it's actually important to avoid saturated fats and trans fats. Um, you know, some of these questions, or some of the, so this question came up in a different way. And so I'm going to say, you know, some people question the, um, they, so people talk about soy and avoiding soy. It's not necessary to avoid soy foods. So eating um, edamame, which are soybeans, or eating, um, eating tofu or tempeh is okay. Um, even several times a week, it's okay to eat, eat those. And Honestly, all you know, research currently is pointing to a perhaps helpful effect of soy, but not a harmful effect of soy for cancer survivors, including breast cancer survivors. But <clears throat> the important thing to remember with soy is to um, eat the soy foods. Don't eat, don't take soy supplements. I would say just completely avoid soy supplements, and then also. Um, avoid, avoid the, um, so, so that you, you'll see, you might see something like a soy protein isolate. You, you might see that something is made with a soy protein isolate. You want to avoid that. Um, but otherwise soy milk is okay. Um, so again, I think it's a good idea to avoid, um, so it's a good idea to avoid, um, saturated fat, trans fat, and you find those in, um, you know, you find, well, saturated fat is animal fat, but you'll find trans fat in, um, so in many snack foods, and you just have to read the label on that. Um, so snack foods, I think of, um, you know, chips, et cetera, <clears throat> might, might have um, trans fat, but also some um, commercial baked goods will have trans fat. So you can avoid that. 
And then one another thing that um, some people have asked about is sugar. So <clears throat> um, it is a good idea to avoid excess sugar um, after a cancer diagnosis, but it's it's not for the reason that everybody might think. So so sugar doesn't in fact feed cancer cells per se, um, but sugar can have detrimental effects on the body. For example. If we're eating excess sugar, <clears throat> we tend to put on weight. And keeping, um, I mean, it's there are many bodies like the World Health Organization, the National Institutes of Health, etc., cetera, um, all come out with guidelines and recommendations. And, and they all really say avoid, um, you know, avoid processed foods, avoid excess sugar. But it, it's not the sugar per se, but it's what happens to the body when there is excess sugar which is, it could be, um, it could be weight gain. And then we are no longer at that healthy body weight. Yeah, yeah, thank you for mentioning sugar. That's actually one of the questions that came in. So I appreciate you mentioning that. And another follow-up to that, someone had just asked, are you able to say when soy is undemonized? I didn't, she said, I didn't know that that was given an okay. When? Um, I, I'm just going to say, <clears throat> I want to say at least for the last decade, and and <clears throat> and it might even be longer. But on the other hand, you know, something gets a bad reputation, and that's it. People, you know, it kind of stays. So what foods will keep your gut healthy? Um, so again, we're just going to talk about, um, you know, we're talking about starting with the healthy base. We're talking about, um, I, I think for the gut, it's all about um, fruits and vegetables. Also though, um, starches and, and again, non-processed starches. So instead of having um, a whole lot of white rice, um, have some other grains instead, like have quinoa. That's one I always go to, but <clears throat> you know, it's, it's really just so much like rice in, in terms of preparation. It sort of takes on the flavor of whatever you're preparing with it. Um, it's got kind of a bland taste. So wh whatever you're making with it adds the flavor to the quinoa, but, <clears throat> but we want those, um, we want those non-processed starches because they add a lot to our to our diets. So they add the um, <clears throat> they add the fiber to the diet. They add the um, you know there are also some there is some other I'm, I'm going to say that there is some antioxidants in there, etc. I would say most important is the fiber. Um, so so those things are all in there. Um, now, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, I kind of lost track of what that question actually was, but, um, I, I don't want to, I, I don't want to think that nobody should ever have a plate of pasta. I mean, that's kind of my go-to and I, I love it, but, um, but it's just really the proportion of these things in our diet. If you can, instead of having rice, have quinoa, um, but, but you do get to enjoy things also. Yeah, so someone just asked, are probiotics okay? Like they let, like the live culture type? They are. The only time I would say um, to avoid those or, or just to ask your doctor and be very careful with it is for somebody, <clears throat> excuse me, who's on a neutropenic diet so, so somebody who might have had, say, um, a, a bone marrow transplant, something of that type. Um, but otherwise, the probiotics should be fine. And there is one thing, um, there's one yogurt. You know, you can get plenty of good probiotics um, in yogurt. And so you want to look for a yogurt that has live cultures. And there is one yogurt that I find to be, um, it's got a lot of it's got many, I mean, we're talking, you, when you talk about live cultures, you can talk about cultures in the millions and billions. So it's Siggy's yogurt. Um, it's, it's got 
many cultures, many different cultures, live cultures, and they're also, um, it's, it's also that particular yogurt is low in sugar. It's one of the, um, it's, it's the one, it's one of the brands that has the least amount of added sugar. And um, so I think that makes it very healthy. And I have no relation to Ziggy's yogurt whatsoever, but I, but I just, I like that it's there because I find it to be, um, you know, I, I do find it to be very, um, very healthy. Thank you. We had a few more questions come in regarding what's okay to eat and what's not okay to eat. So someone just asked if Honey Nut Cheerios and Wheaties are okay to eat. You know, I always look at the, um, <clears throat> I always look at the fiber on cereal boxes. So, <clears throat> and my preferred cereal is oatmeal. Um, I try to have it, I have it almost every single day. But um, so, so I say this just to say that I'm not all that well versed in the Honey Nut Cheerios or the Wheaties. Um, honey Nut Cheerios though, I think can be pretty sweet. So, you know, if you're having it every day, you're really adding a lot of sugar. And then um, Wheaties, honestly, I, I don't think there's a lot of sugar in there. I know they're not sweetened, but I also don't know about the fiber content. So I would say look for something that's got at least three grams of fiber per serving with cereals. Yes. Before I go to the next question, um, can you repeat the name of the yogurt you'd mentioned? There are a couple of questions that people just wanted to get that name of the yogurt down. Yes, it's it's Siggy's. It's S-I-G-G-I-S. -G -G okay, great. Great. And then so also on the, the topic of what's okay to eat and what's not, um, someone asked if the Molina Durham wheat spaghetti is okay. And someone else asked if brown rice is okay to eat. Um, so I'm going to say brown rice has, it, it definitely has more fiber than white rice, although um, honestly not that much more, but I think I would always say go for the brown rice instead of the white. And unfortunately the, um, the semolina durum wheat is really a process, you know, it's processed, it's processed wheat, it's white, it gets white bread, it's white pasta. Um, I like it myself, but, but that's but that's what it is. So just understand if you're having it that you're not, you know, you're not necessarily having too much fiber. Okay, great. We have about three minutes left. So any final questions, definitely feel free to submit. Um, we had another question that came in and said, what website would you recommend to do research on the herbs and medication interaction? Let's see. There are, I mean, in terms of websites, I, I don't know specifically what website to look. Actually, I do. I do know a website where you could look that up. And that is, um, I believe it's NCCAM. So I think it's the, um, uh, I think it's compl Complementary and Alternative Medicine is the CAM. And it's probably the national something, I, but I'm pretty sure it's NCCAM. It's actually an NIH database. And that's what I wanted to say about research and databases is just be sure you're looking at something um, that you're looking at something valid. So for example, if you find information from um, NIH or if you even like even from Memorial Sloan Kettering or um, the, the Mayo Clinic, um, those are things that I certainly look at. Also, if you're looking to do more extensive research, you can go to PubMed and um, <clears throat> that's where you're gonna find, um, well, you're gonna find scientific studies in there, but PubMed is open to the public. There's another one and I, I can't remember the name, but that's, you know, most of the time you have to have a, um, you have to have a uh, subscription, but PubMed is open to the public. And even if you can't get um, articles from there and older articles you can get, but even if you can't get the full article, you can get the abstract and that's important. It gives good information. And if you see a lot of abstracts and they all have the same information, then that's a good thing um, depending on you know what you're looking for and what outcome you wanted it to be. It's a good thing because it just shows that, um, it, well, it, it really just shows that um, 
that there's agreement in, in research. Yeah, thank you so much. So unfortunately sure. we are um, out of time, but Ronnie, we cannot thank you enough for uh, being here with us tonight and offering your expertise. Um, so we really, really appreciate everything tonight. And so if you are a caregiver, because this is our caregiver support group, we ask that you stay on for the next minute, 30 minutes um, from seven to 7.30. They'll continue the caregiver support group. So our facilitators, Andrew and Colleen will be here and they'll take you through the last 30 minutes group but everyone else feel free to log off now again ronnie thank you so much um this has thank been really you. great we appreciate it it was my pleasure and thanks very much for having me and um and stephanie i'm going to send you the slides yes yeah that would be great and we had mentioned this before but this but this record this was recorded and will be on the share website in once two weeks also we'll have a recording um sent to everybody and also ronnie slides we'll make sure that's sent to everybody who registered so you'll definitely be able to access this information thank um, you thanks again ronnie this is great Bye. thanks stephanie thank you be well thank you very much Okay. okay, so Colleen, I will let you take it away with um, your support group. So um, I'm going to make you the host. And you're the host. And also, um, let me just make sure. Oh, it looks Okay, so you are the host now. You have the recording uh, capabilities. So if you hit on the bottom, Colleen, yes, there is a record button. You can just hit stop recording. Um, wait a minute. Oh, 